I solve every single one so easily. This is Kate largest sum in a binary tree. G. Go Bears. Okay, so you're given the root of a binary tree in a positive integer K. Okay, the level sum in the tree is the sum of the values of the nodes that are on the same level. Okay, so, you know, if you thought of this as the root of the tree, this would be one level, eight and nine would be another level, two, one, three, and seven would be another level, four and six would be another level. You can think of it graphically as kind of like the horizontal level within the tree, or you can think of it in terms of the distance from the root, right? The, the nodes that are distance zero from the root form one level, right? So five. The nodes that form a distance one away from the root, like eight and nine, are um, level one, right? Because they're distance one from the root. These nodes are distance two from the root, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So these would be level two nodes. So you, that would be the level... Um, that would be that level of the tree. So then the level sum would just be the sum of these values, right? So the sum of this value would be five. The sum of this would be eight plus nine, 17. The sum of this would be three plus three, six plus seven, 13. The sum of this would be four plus six is 10, right? So that's the level sum idea, right? It's just this horizontal level, the sum of the nodes at that level. Okay. So we're going to return the kth largest level sum in the tree, not necessarily distinct if there are fewer than k levels in the tree return negative one. So maybe you want the 10th the largest level in the tree, but the tree only has three levels. Well, then there is no 10th largest level, right? Note that two nodes on the, are on the same level if they have the same distance from the root. Okay, so this is one of those nice problems because you can very easily compartmentalize or categorize what you're going to do in terms of like, what am I going to do to solve this aspect of the problem? And what am I going to do to solve this aspect of the problem? And they're kind of exclusive from one another. Okay, so there's really two sub problems within this problem that we need to tackle, right? When you look at this, it should be very clear that these are the two problems that you're going to need to tackle. The first one, right, the first sub problem is finding level sums. Right, because we're going to need to look at the kth largest level sum. So we're going to need to look at the level sums, right? So we're going to need to somehow efficiently find the level sum for this level, which is 5. Find the level sum of 8 and 9, add that together. Find the level sum for 2, 1, 3, 7, add that together, right? So we need to find an efficient way, a quick way, a way that's intuitive, a way that makes sense to find the level sum. And when we find all these level sums, we need to return the kth largest level sum. So the second thing we need to do is find the kth largest sum, okay? So these are the two things that we need to do in order to solve this problem. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is finding the level, finding level sums, okay? Now, you know, shocker, we're dealing with a tree and we're dealing with trying to find things at a level, we're gonna be doing some sort of traversal of this tree to determine the level sums. And the easiest way to do that would be I'm just going to erase this. Finding level sums would be running breadth first search. Now, if you're familiar with breadth first search, the idea is in breadth first search is you look at everything that's X distance away from a tree. And then you look at everything that's X plus one distance from a tree. And then you look at everything that's X plus two distance from a tree and so on and so forth. So if we were talking about level order, well, we start with the root of the tree, which is five, right? And I'm going to draw this tree out, eight, nine, eight has children, two and one. Please bear with me for a moment. Nine has children, three and seven. And two has children, four and six. So if we want to find a level order traversal of this system, right? We want to find the nodes at each level so we can sum them up. The best way of doing that is via breadth first search, right? Because the idea of breadth first search is you look at everything at one level before you look at everything at subsequent levels. So meaning that you would look at everything at this first level. And then when you're done with that, you would look at everything at the next level. And then when you're done with that, you would look at everything at the subsequent level. And then when you're done with that, you would look at everything at the subsequent level of that. And the way that that basically works is you create this queue, 
okay? So you start with a Q that's just five. And when you pop something from the Q, you're going to add its neighbors to the next Q, sort of, okay? So I'm saying is you look at five and then you add five's neighbors to the new Q, okay? So then you have this new Q, which is going to be equal to 8 and 9. Okay? Now, when you process everything in the Q, the Q becomes the new Q. So after we've looked at all of the things that are green, we complete this iteration and we set the Q to this new thing. So then these new values become green. Okay? So now our Q is 8, 9. And then we're going to create this new Q again. by adding all the neighbors of everything in our queue, right? So we'll add two and we'll add one because that's the neighbor of eight. And I notice we don't go backwards, right? We just keep going forwards. We go down the tree, right? In the way that this tree is structured, right? We're just looking at our left child and our right child. So we add two, we add one, and then we look at nine, which is another node in the queue. So you can kind of specify, okay, I've finished with this one now. Now we look at nine and we play this same game. So we look at three and we look at seven. We add that to the queue again, right? So now that we've processed everything within this initial queue, now our new queue is the queue again. So I'm not going to keep going through this, right? But I think you get the gist of how this works. Now this new thing is the queue. But what you'll notice is that every level of the queue, right? Remember the queue was here at one point and it was just five. Since we look at everything at one level before we look at things at subsequent levels, that indicates that everything that's in the queue at one time is everything of a certain level, right? At this point, everything in the queue was everything at level zero. At this point, everything in the queue was everything at level one. At this point, everything in the queue was everything in the everything in the queue was everything at level two, right? And if we ran it again, we would end up adding these two neighbors. So then everything in the queue would be everything at level so one, two, three, right? So in order to find the level sums. We could just run breadth first search, look at what the queue is, add its values together, and then create the next queue and add the values together and so on and so forth, right? So here we would know that the level sum is five, right? Here it would be eight plus nine because I'm just directly taking the values of what's in the queue to get 17. Here I would know that the values of the queue are two plus one plus three plus seven. So that's 10, 13, 13. Right, and then here it would be four and six and gives us 10. So we can basically run breadth first search. And since breadth first search looks at everything at one level before the subsequent level, we run breadth first search, we add up all the values in the queue. That's one level sum. We go to the, we run breadth first search, another like iteration of breadth first search to get to the next level. And that'll be everything in the next level will be in the queue. We add it up, we'll get another level sum. So we can find level sums like that. So before we deal with finding the kth largest level sum, let's just first think about this idea of um, finding the level sums using breadth first search given this idea in code. So the way that we're gonna do this, maybe a little hand wavy, but essentially how this works is we create a queue and we start it at level zero of the system, right? So we start, it by pointing it just with the root, right? Because that's the zeroth level value. And then while there's something in the queue, that means that there's still something we can explore, right? Until we process four and six, we can continue going, right? Because we look at five, then we look at eight, nine, then we look at two, one, three, and seven. Two is the only thing that provides something at the next level. So then we look at four and six, then four and six don't have any other neighbors. So there's no other levels to traverse, but we keep traversing level by level by level. Even when it gets kind of weird where the tree isn't full, right? There's this empty area over here. So we look at each layer of the queue and I could say, well, this level, I'm just gonna put just for debugging, right? We'll print the sum of the values within the queue, right? So node.val for node in queue, right? Because I'm using this idea of a tree node. So tree node is, there's the actual intrinsic thing, like the object, which is the root, 
right? But the root has a value that we're gonna sum up to get the level sum of some level. And then we're gonna update the queue. So how do we update the queue? Well, we take what was in the queue at the previous level and we add their children, right? That's what we did here. We took what was in the queue and we added the children to get two and one. And we took nine and we added his children. So we always add whatever's in the queue's children to the new queue. So we create the new queue and then we set it to the queue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add each child for each node. We're gonna look at each node in the queue. And we're gonna look at each child of each node in the queue, right? So we look at each node in the queue and we look at each child of each node in the queue. So we look at each node, so we look at eight, we look at his children, we add it to our new queue. We look at nine, we add it, we look at his children, we add them to the new queue. Okay. That's the general idea. For child in node. So what are the possible children? Well, there's node dot left and node dot right. But we're only gonna add that child if it exists, right? Because like this node doesn't have a node dot left or a node dot right, right? This node doesn't have a node dot left, node dot right. You don't want to add like null or none or zero or some empty value to your queue because your queue should just be all the va all the nodes at that level. You don't want to add empty values, so you'll only do it if that child exists. So that'll stop it here because like two, one, three, seven, two will add four and six, but we don't want to add like. We don't want to add null, 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 because these things have are uh, leaf nodes, right? They don't have children. Um, okay, so that's that. So then let's go ahead and do this so we can kind of see how this works. Now, this is going to error because I'm not returning anything, and it's going to be wrong when I'm returning, but we'll just see how this works, right? So it first it prints out the first level's values, which is 5, right? And then this value is 17. And then this value is 13, like we said, and this value is 10. So we're getting each level here printed. So we know that this breadth first search idea works now of using breadth first search to get the level sum at each level. And we're doing it you know, efficiently and in a very clear manner. Um, so now what it comes down to is, well, how do we deal with this second component of this problem? right? So we're good with this. We know how to use level order, sort, uh, level order traversal in order to find you know, the level order of each level. But how do we most efficiently find the, um, the what? The je ne sais quoi. The je ne sais quoi. Now, how do we find the kth largest value? Now, you may be inclined to, and this would be kind of the most intuitive approach if you haven't learned about a very particular data structure we're about to cover, which is, you know, we want to find what again? We want to find the kth largest the kth largest what the kth largest level sum level order sum All right so that's what we're looking for we're looking for the kth largest level order sum how are we going to find that um efficiently and the most intuitive approach would be to what you would just find all the level order sums right and then you'd sort it you sort the level order sums that you found and then you just return the kth largest one from that sorted list. And that is pretty good, right? And if we have k le if we have n nodes log n levels The thing is is we'll get that will give us a good runtime, right? It'll be proportional to the height of the tree, right? Because there'll be height of the tree number of level sums and then you would have to do a sorting algorithm. So it'd be the height of the tree times log of the height of the tree in terms of runtime complexity, because you'd have to sort. But I'm trying to think about, you know, what is a faster way of doing it? Well, one of the fastest ways when you're dealing with this kind of paradigm, not paradigm, but when you're given this kind of problem, the kth largest of something, you can use a priority queue okay and with the priority queue you'll keep track of the k largest things okay so we're gonna use a priority pri priority priority queue and keep track of the k largest values so essentially what we'll do is We'll look at a value. We'll, we'll look at a level sum.
and then we'll add it to our queue. We'll add it to our priority queue, okay? And then if the value is, if, if we already have K values, then we only wanna keep track of the K largest ones. So we wanna pop out the smallest ones. So if we have more than K values, we pop the smallest one, okay? And this may not make a lot of sense, but the idea is I'm trying to keep track of the K largest things. So I have K things that I think are the K largest things. If I get an additional thing, then one thing within that bag of K largest things doesn't fit, right? Because now I have the K plus one, I have K plus one thing. So I remove the smallest thing from that batch to get the K largest things, right? So that way I can always keep track of the K largest things. If that doesn't make sense, let's just go ahead and uh, kind of print out a few statements which will um, show you exactly what the uh, priority queue looks like and how it's functioning. So we'll create this empty priority queue and we'll get the level sum. So we'll, we'll take our priority queue. So we'll use the heap queue dot heap push library on the priority queue that we created. Now, this is just a very particular strange syntax that's used for heaps in Python. So just bear with me, whatever language you use, if you use Python, that you're probably familiar with this. If you're not, just recognize it's kind of weird. You use this heap push library, you push it to this priority queue, and then you determine which value you're going to use. So the level sum value that we're adding is the value of the level sum, right? Which is the sum of all the nodes within the queue because the queue is now all the nodes at some level so we add all the vowels for node in queue and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to print the priority queue um for testing and then what we'll do is we'll say well if the prior if the length of the priority queue is larger than k right so we have too many values we'll just let go of the smallest one which is heap q dot heap pop where we pop it from pq okay so for this example we want the two largest things right so in the beginning we have just five so we only have one thing so the two largest things we don't have enough things to make that assessment then we have five and 17. now what happens is when we add 13 we have five 17 and three we want only the two largest things so we want to pop off we want to pop off the five, right? Because the five is definitely not one of the two largest things because I'm looking at three things and five is less than two of them. So five definitely can't be the largest thing. So we remove it. And then we have 10, 17, and 13 because that happens after we add four and six, right? You'll notice that the five is now gone. And then we're going to remove the 10, right? Because if we have three things, 10, 17, and 13, we're only looking for the two largest things, then 10 definitely isn't in that equation, right? 17 and 13 if there were additional levels they might get removed too but since we're looking at three things we're only looking for the two largest then 10 definitely can never be one of the two largest things because it's smaller than two things i've already added to my priority queue so that has to go so then at the end what we would do is just say well 17 and 13 are the two largest things so we want the second largest thing so we want to return the minimum thing of our priority queue Right, because whatever the smallest thing is is in our priority queue will be the kth largest thing, right? Because I'm keeping track of the kth largest things. So the smallest of the kth largest things is the kth largest thing. <laughs> Maybe if you don't understand the solution, just sort it and return the kth largest thing and you'll be fine. So but we'll only do that if the length of the priority queue equals k. Because if the length of the priority queue doesn't equal k, that means that we never got k largest things. So we're going to return heap q dot heap pop priority queue. Otherwise, we return negative one. Because if the length of the priority queue isn't k, that means we didn't populate it with k value. So there wasn't k iterations of this loop. Okay, we should probably get rid of this print. It's going to affect our auto graders. Assessment. Okay, so in summary, what we did with this problem is we took it and we broke it up into two sub problems, right? First sub problem is how do we efficiently and, and, and effectively 
find level sums and we solve that using breadth per search and the second problem is how do we find the kth largest things and we talked about well you know the most intuitive thing to do would be to sort but instead we'll just use a priority queue that keeps track of the kth largest things that way at the end we can return the smallest thing and then we just kind of intertwine them together to get the solution so let's go ahead and think about what the runtime complexity is of this okay so for Let's say that um, n equals the number of nodes that we have in the whole tree, right? And k is k, of course. So for time, what do we have to do? Well, we have to look at each node, right? Because we have to look at each node to determine what its value is to add it to its corresponding level sum. So for this q, we're going to look at all nodes, right? We're going to look at every single node and we're going to add its children to the q and keep expanding downwards like that right so we have to look at all n nodes right at least once we have to traverse each node and add its children but we'll only look at it once because we never go backwards right we just keep going down this tree we never have to like reprocess a node that we already looked at so we look at each n nodes once um and then we have this priority queue where we have to keep track of the k largest values right so you know, ah. so it's so hard to think about runtime here because in order to do a push operation, this, this priority queue will never be larger than K, right? Because when this priority queue becomes larger than K, we pop a value. So it always stays within the boundaries of K. So each operation is log K items, right? But you have to add for the number of layers within the tree, you have to add to this priority queue, right? It's not a constant operation. So whatever the height is of the tree. So uh, let's say that M equals the height of the tree. Yikes, this is getting ugly. So then we have to look at all M iterations of this loop and we have to do log K um, operations. So what is M, what is the height of the tree with respect to So what's the height of a binary tree? I'm thinking it's log log, right? Log two, okay. So it's log of n. So m is the height of the tree, the number of nodes m. So that's log of n nodes. So we have to do log of n layers, and then we do log of k operations to keep track of um, the k largest values. Right, so this is n plus log of n times log of k. Um, I wonder, so k is less than or equal to n. So then technically it'd be log of n squared or, uh, I don't know. So that's fine, that's fine. I'm not gonna play any more games with time. That's, that's more than enough for me. Okay, so then for space, well, we can add all of O of n nodes, right? In the worst case, if there's only two nodes, you add both children proportional to n. Yeah, I don't know about time and space here. Maybe it's not my best bet. I'll, someone tell me in the comment what the time and space complexity of this is. It's a little confusing. All right, peace out.